YouTube, what is going on? It's your boy Jay Tissel, and today we are bringing you a brand new video of a big update that just came into Call of Duty. This is patch update 1.05, and it's for Call of Duty Black Ops 4, of course, but it is live. It came out today around 1 o'clock Eastern Time. It's about the same release as last time, and this patch came to PlayStation first. So this will release on Xbox One and PC on November 20th. So seven days early on PlayStation 4. So for you Xbox and PC players, just hang in there. Um, the whole partnership with Activision and um, the Sony thing, that that's why they're doing this. Hopefully they can just get rid of that. Um, but I, I feel like they never will get to that point just because of competitive play. CWL has to have sponsorship. So you can't just run like Xbox and PS4. It has to be one console that everybody plays on. So I think that's why they're doing that. But I hope they get rid of the... Um, I think it's a sanction. I don't really know what it's called, but the thing that allows them to release stuff early than other consoles. I, I hope they get rid of that at some point. But anyways, so this is a message from Treyarch. And of course, I'm reading this all off of charlieintel.com. And then you're also getting a first look in the background of Nuketown. And I, I think it's just called Nuketown. I, I don't know if it has a different name to it, but it is Nuketown. They brought it back today as well. And um, you're getting a, a first look of it. I drop a total of like 140 kills, 150 kills in these two games, or maybe even more than that. But yeah, so let's get into it. So this is a message from Treyarch itself. So it says, first up, Nuketown has arrived. One of our most popular maps of all time makes it a reimagined debut in Black Ops 4, complete with its own unique surprises to discover. In the true Treyarch tradition, we're kicking off the Nuketown featured playlist this week on PS4 to celebrate. As a reminder, Nuketown is free for all Black Ops 4 players, launching today on PS4 and available on platforms next week. So there it is. Nuketown is, is in here, and it will be available on the other platforms next week. Now, there is a lot... Of different things in this map as you can tell it's completely snow covered it looks like it has to do with something in russia uh, there was always easter eggs or something on the past few nuketown maps so maybe there's something on this map that um we, we could check out or we could find possibly because it does say right here with its own unique surprises to discover so hopefully there's like an easter egg or something that we might have to dig into all right so, so all the stuff here i'll try and tell that you guys can check out I'll put the link in the descri description below but we are going to go straight to the patch notes. So to start off, PS4 only patch notes so far. So multiplayer, the Nuketown map has been added. And Nuketown featured playlist is added. So you can just play Nuketown 24-7. Well, it's not really 24-7. It's just, you know what I'm saying. It's just a Nuketown playlist for the launch of Nuketown. So I'm guessing it's going to be for seven days. Um, blackout. For Blackout, the Bowie Knife is now available. You can find and wield a classic weapon for one hit melee kills, which is huge because armor is disgusting in blackout so if you can one hit people with melee weapons that's um that's pretty pretty big so um to celebrate the launch of nuketown zombies now spawn on nuketown island with a new zombie supply stash spawn location behind the nuketown sign so that is for blackout guys if you guys are blackout players go ahead and check that out that's going to be pretty insane um black market so blackjack shop is added i'll, I'll include or not include but i'll add another video i'll post another video right after this of that and i'm gonna be buying some stuff for you guys and then here's the PS4 and Xbox One gameplay balances. And I wonder why they don't add the PC to this. Like, I don't know why PC doesn't get any love. But this is a message from Treyarch right here for multiple modes, gameplay balance. So it says, this gameplay update focuses on addressing the issues our community has been most passionate about. Ajax, SMGs, the SG-12 strobe light, cold-blooded, and much more. Some of these changes affect multiple modes that we've called out where certain changes only apply to multiplayer. So to start things off, Submachine guns. MX9, they adjusted the five hit kill range up from six meters on the multiplayer only. They slightly increased the ADS movement speed. Now, I noticed a pattern. They did this with all submachine guns. Uh, I think that's all, except there's one. They're missing one. The SOG. So they didn't do this with a SOG. So it's, it's like an increased ADS move speed to all the weapons but the SOG. Um, as far as GKS goes, they adjusted the five hit kill range up to three meters. Cordite, they adjusted the five hit kill range up to three meters. And they did the same for the Spitfire, but it's a six hit kill range because it's lower damage. And that's your submachine guns. So next up, we got assault rifles. For the Maddox, they slightly increased the recoil of the first and second shots. And the Echo Fire Operator Mod, they removed recoil penalty, penalty when equipped. I have not used Echo Fire. I am probably going to unlock it soon if I don't have it already. And I will try. I will try to get a gameplay with that because the Maddox is my favorite gun in the game right now. I use it for competitive as well, and I really want to try that out since operator mods aren't banned in GB variant. So we we'll have to get to that. For the KM57, they reduced the idle sway and they slightly increased the four-hit kill range by 1.5 meters. 
This is, of course, for multiplayer only. None of this applies to Blackout. So for the Rampart 17, they reduce idle sway, and they slightly reduce recoil of first and third shots. So this gun might have a little more predictable recoil. I don't know how big that's going to be because the gun just, you know, shoots straight up all the time. But that might be huge. They also increase the four-hit kill range by three meters. On to tactical rifles. We have the Swordfish, and they slightly reduce the delay between bursts. This is a gun that is broken. You can use default class and drop 50 kills easily because no one knows how to defend it. So first thing they did is slightly reduce the delay burst between bursts. They reduced the idle sway. And then the Penta Burst Operator mod now implements standard burst delay. So there's a delay in between those, those five shots each time. On to LMGs. That was the only thing they did for attack rifles. LMGs, they only mess with the Titan. They reduce the ADS speed. They increase sprint out time. They slightly increase hip fire spread. And they also slightly reduce movement benefits when you equipped stock. Now, this is a nerf. This is a big nerf because the Titan is broken. As you can see in this gameplay here, I get shredded by the Titan still. So they did nothing to damage. Titan still like two, three shot kill. If you're holding down a position with it or a head glitch, you're still going to win those fights like 75% of the time. It's just a matter of they they nerfed the mobility of it. And I talked about that in my Titan LMG video that they need to nerf the mobility because it runs like a submachine gun. So they did that. We'll, we'll see how that is because, I mean, I'm, I'm Dark Matter now. I'm just trying to go for Master Prestige, so I'll use a lot of different weapons. And um, I'm going to be posting a lot of gameplays because Nuketown's out and it's easy to get gameplays on Nuketown. I mean, everybody wants to see, like, high kill games. It's easy to get them on Nuketown, so we'll be posting those. Next up, Sniper Rifles. For the Outlaw Sniper Rifle, big buffs. Big buffs came to the Outlaw. They slightly increased fire rate, greatly reduced idle sway, slightly increased ADS speed, Updated ADS rechamber animation to make it easier to stay on target. Recoil now centers more reliably. Increased base damage increased by 10, only affecting shots to kill an already damaged target. Big buffs to the, the Outlaw Sniper. This thing might be viable now to actually use. The only two snipers before that were the Paladin and the Kashka for your one-hit kills. Um, the SDM, they added aim assist while hip firing. And if you guys saw, I did post an SDM video. And in the whole video, I'm pretty sure, I, I mean, every single time I used it, every single game, I would talk about ADS, or not ADS, or I would talk about um, aim assist. There's no aim assist because it's a sniper rifle. Makes sense. But when I hip fire, I need ADS on a gun like that. There's no way I can just be shooting blanks at people that are in my face. And you see it a lot in that gameplay, and you see it in my, my streams when I was using the SDM to get Dark Matter. I was shooting blanks when people were coming close to me, and I had no way to defend myself, even with laser sight. So that's going to be a big buff. I have a buddy, Panzer, if you guys haven't you know, seen any videos of him. He actually uses the SDM in competitive. So with a laser sight on it, even without a laser sight, aim assist is going to be insane. Um, onto the Koshka, the recoil now centers more reliably after the first shot. So decent little buff right there. Nothing too crazy. For shotguns, SG-12, reduce visual effect of strobe light operator mod. Reduced range at which strobe light affects aim assist by 50%. Nerfs to the strobe light. That's really all they did. Nothing else with the SG-12 here. Just the shotgun um, strobe light operator mod. That's all they did. And that's huge because everyone would they literally abuse the hell out of that in games. In pubs especially. And it made it hard to shoot. Pro tip. If someone's using a strobe light, just shoot where the light was. And then you can get the kill pretty easily. For attachments. Grip 2. Um, they reduced the flinch mitigation. Um, that's all they did for attachments on a specialist. Here's the big ones. Ajax, huge nerf, huge nerf to Ajax. Hopefully you can actually use him and, um, or not use him, actually counter him in games. Now for Ajax, they reduce the nine banks flash effect duration by 25%. Nine bank is now counter more effectively by tack mass. So we have a working tack mask, hopefully increase bullet spread by 25% and fortify stance when using the ballistic shield. Ajax turn speed is now properly slowed when he's hit by a concussion grenade with the ballistic shield equipped. Resolved an issue that could prevent Ajax from being hit from certain angles from behind, yeah, from behind with the ballistic shield equipped. And they added a third person sound effect for two or three charges of the nine bank so you can tell what he's charging up. Huge nerfs to Ajax. We'll have to see how it works out. I'll have to play a little bit to see how I like it. Um... On the Profit, they improved the Tempest accuracy, and I used it in this next gameplay, and you guys are going to see that. Um, Tempest charges attached to players will no longer be destroyed by explosives. 
and they resolved an issue where the Seeker Shock Mine would get stuck in a loop on Morocco. So nothing too crazy there other than Tempest Accuracy, which was the biggest downfall. From, that was the, the thing I complained about the most. Tempest does not hit when you want it to. And I think that had to do with, as you're scoping in, it thinks you're no scoping. So it gives you no aim assist. So you just miss. Um, fire Break. The Pure Fire will now properly damage the Strike Team. I guess that was a problem I didn't know about. Um, Ruin resolved an issue that could lead to the grapple gun failing to connect the surfaces when the player was moving. For perks, Tack Mask increased resistance to Nine Bang, Concussion Grenade, and Razor Wire. So Tack Mask is now a working perk, hopefully. We have not tested it, but hopefully it is. Flak Jacket increased resistance to explosive damage. Cold Blooded increased the delay period before an enemy AI will target players during a period of maintained line of sight. This will give more players more time to get cover or fight back against enemy AI. This is huge because I have a shot or I have a class I use to shoot down stuff and I run cold blooded on it, obviously, because I don't want to get, you know, shot. But I get shot anyways. I get destroyed every time I pull out this class and I never even get my three rockets off on a helicopter before, you know, this thing sees me within the first shot. So it's I'm glad they did that. Hopefully that's a big buff to these um, resistance perks. Hopefully we can counter things more. And then um, Dead Silence, this is for multiplayer and blackout, this Dead Silence buff right here. But it now suppresses player sounds relating to healing, taking fall damage, or surfacing while swimming. That's big time because if you have Dead Silence on, especially in competitive, I've noticed this a lot, since there's only two people on the map in 2v2s or three or four, you know, there's, there's not a lot of people on the map. On maps like Contraband and Hacienda, it's big to hear somebody in the water. You get all that information just like that. You can hear them break the surface. Everyone rocks dead silence and competitive, so there's no way you should be able to hear them. But now, we're going to be able to just swim through the water and be uh, sneaky sharks. For score streak, strike team, teams can now only have one strike team active at a time. So I guess that was a thing where you could get more than one. I didn't run a lot of strike team this prestige, so I don't, or my whole career on this game so far, so I couldn't really tell you. But that seems pretty good. So now let's go up the multiplayer. I'm going to put timestamps in the description for you guys that want to just click through and not have to listen to all of this. So, playlist updates. Endurance Chaos Mosh Pit added to the featured category. So it's 6v6 with double score limits. This includes TDM, that goes to 150 score limit with a 15 minute timer. Domination, which goes from 200 score round limit to 400 score match limit. Hardpoint, which goes to 500 score limit with 10 minute time limit. And Kill Confirm, which goes to 120 score limit, 15 minute time limit. That's insane. I'm going to be playing some of this because I want to get 100 kill gameplays. Obviously, everyone wants to get 100 kill gameplays. And if you want to do it, this will be the best time to do it. TDM that goes to 150. You know what the, you know how endless the options are there for um, noobs, especially? Because everyone plays TDM. You can go in there and get great gameplays. Uh, domination, going to 400. I can only imagine how many kills you're going to get 400 or even hard point to 500. Hard point's probably the best game mode for kills if, um, if it's played the right way, if the score is real close. If it's not, if it's one-sided, then it, it's not. Domination's usually better for that. But even kill confirmed, I mean, you have to capture 120 tags. I'm dropping 60 plus kills in the normal game mode. So with 120 score limit, I can't even imagine. I'm gonna go through all these, play these, of course. You guys are gonna see that on the streams, on the videos, and um, yeah, in the content. So, mercenary capture mosh pit added to the featured category, which is 5v5 domination, hard point, and control which means no parties allowed in mercenary. So if you don't want to get spawn trapped or you don't want to get random dumb teammates or not random dumb teammates, you don't want to get like a five stack on the other team and you have random dumb teammates on your, st your side, play mercenary so everybody's dumb. And um, no, I'm just kidding, not everyone's dumb, but it, yeah, play mercenary because you're not going to run into those six stack parties or those five stack parties that are going to give you uh, nightmares at night. As for hardcore search and destroy, they added it to a featured category. And then gun game remains in the featured category. So they said they were gonna take that out November 6th. They took it out for like two days or something and they put it back in and now it's back. So, I mean, I don't think they, they took it out for like literally two days this whole time. But check out this Tempest play here. You're gonna see the accuracy I'm talking about as I aim down sight. Uh, yeah, boom, that way. And yeah, it's, it's just, it feels better now. Definitely feels better. So let's go on the spawns. So for team deathmatch, I don't really understand what this means, but they said for team deathmatch, spawns adjustments made for, well, this is for all the game modes. Team deathmatch, domination, free for all, hard point, control. Yeah, so the, for those those game modes, spawn adjustments made for arsenal, summit, and silo. If 
I can recall there's no map named Silo. And I don't, I don't really know what that means. I don't know what that means. I, I mean, I know they use code words for their maps. They don't use the actual names of maps when they're coding and stuff and they're creating the maps. They use code names. So maybe that's their code name. They just released it like that. But I can't think of a map based off silo other than, um, I mean, I, there's silos in the back of Arsenal and there's silos in the back, back of uh, Frequency or all over Frequency. So I don't really know about that one. But for Hardpoint, they adjust the spawn logic associated with active hardpoint to reduce weight given to spawns near the hardpoint. This should help reduce times when teams spawn on the same side as the active hardpoint. Uh, for a seaside, spawn adjustments made the house spawn system evaluate enemies on seaside, and then the same thing for gridlock. Um, game modes, custom games. They resolved an issue that would display friendlies as enemies on a round switch in custom games. That's big because people will stop bitching about that. Um, they also added an option of custom game matches or custom control matches to enable team kills and suicides to count toward your team's number of remaining lives. Um, hardcore team killing a player near their own care package will now reflect damage back to the attacker. This is how to prevent team killing to steal a teammate's care package. You know who you are. <laughs> That's literally what it says. And it's funny because I almost did this in one of my videos back in the day. I was using the auger to get that dark matter and I actually almost did this. I was thinking about it, but. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm one of those people I fall into that category. Um, they adjusted health models so that we can better balance out low damage weapons to hardcore, such as SMGs and pistols. I never really had a problem with pistols. I did have problems with SMGs and hardcore, so that's pretty good, I guess, for the SMG part, but pistols are going to be broken now. So go get your dark matter, go get your headshots and hardcore with those. Um, armor has been rebalanced for hardcore, impacting the variety of weapons across different ranges. Armor can effectively counter some weapons by requiring an extra shot and higher damage weapons counter armor by overriding its protection. Razor wire no longer does team damage to teammates who melee the razor wire. And then lastly, resolved an issue where bots would not play hardcore variant mode correctly. So I didn't know the razor wire thing was even a problem. I didn't even know the armor thing was a problem. So they did a big rebalance for you hardcore players. I'm done with hardcore, not playing it. I got dark matter. Screw, the, you know, heck, heck, hardcore, not doing it. Um, yeah, so there's that. So for the heist game modes, for you heist players out there, Seeker Shock Mine cost increased, Hellstorm cost increased, Lightning Stock or Lightning Strike cost increased. Down players will now bleed out if the last remaining player suicides. The extraction waypoint is not or now shown at the start of the round. Start the round of the round. And then resolved an issue or a lightning strike kill cam would not show correctly if killing a down player. Uh, search and destroy resolved an issue that would grant an additional round win if the last enemy was killed just before the bomb was detonated. And then resolved an issue where certain optics could have a blue or red static background when spectating. Uh, CWL custom games. This is huge for you competitive players out there that play CWL or you're playing for your pro points or whatever you're doing. Um, I don't partake in that yet. I will take, you know, I'll, I'll play that when the actual competitive modes come out. But as far as CWL settings, I don't play those because I only play Search and Destroy. But here you go. Players can now select official CWL hard, or variants of Hardpoint, Control, Search and Destroy, and Custom Games. These variants will now have the current rules and restrictions found in the CWL rule set applied. Um, they introduced a ga custom game option to support competitive tuning for specialists for CWL rules. This is big. I don't know if you guys are aware or if you guys that watch this are involved in the pro the pro community or like the pro COD players, but a lot of them, I say a lot of them, eggs, um, mainly eggs, and um, maybe one or two other pros, bitch a lot about specialists. And a lot of the pros bitch a lot about specialists. But in my opinion, I think that competitive games or the competitive game mode should be played with everything we have in pubs. Obviously, there's some things that could be banned. UAV is kind of, it could be tweaked, I guess. But things like that should be tweaked. And usually what they do in the past or what they have done in the past is when there's a problem or there's something that's kind of broken, instead of tweaking it just for this specific game mode, they get rid of it completely. And I don't want them to get rid of this stuff. I think we have a great game here. I think that if you tweak these with the right tweaks, it'll be fun to play competitively i'm still talking competitively because i mean pubs are awesome but so let's talk about this they tweaked so much stuff 
to try to get these pro players to actually agree with them and allow it into their games. Because a lot of the pro players, gentlemen's agreement thinks where they don't even allow it if it's even, so it can be allowed and then they'll have a gentleman's agreement to where they don't use it. So hopefully the pros will use this stuff more often. It'll, it'll make for a, a wider variety of gameplay, a lot of different things happening. And let's get into this. So they enabled this with this setting. Barricade deals no damage, but it still slows. Now just think about how big of a difference that is. If you're running by a barricade, it slows you, but you're not doing damage. That means the barricade is actually, you know, it's not broken. So there's that. Barricade has reduced health, so it's not going to take you as many clips to take it out. Razor wire deals no damage, but still slows. Just like that. That's another thing that you put that in the game. It's going to slow you, but you can run through it. So it doesn't just shut off the whole entire the lane. Um, razor wire has reduced health, so you don't have to take three clips to actually break one razor wire. A lot of people in, in the competitive game modes don't run scavengers, so they're not going to have any ammo once they use the three clips, and I, I think that's a good change right there. Since your dart only lasts three seconds, enough for one ping. I like that. I, I love these changes, and I'm going to keep saying that I love these changes, because this is going to make for a more competitive game, and they're actually responding to the pros, you know, wants and needs without removing their game. I don't think it's right for them to, to create this beautiful game and they have to, to take away 50% of it just because the pros don't want to play it. Um, Tactical has a maximum of four spawns for it's destroyed, so that's a nerf. Um, Tactical has a reduced duration. Reactor core deals reduced damage. Helion Salvo rockets deal reduced splash damage to players, and then mesh mines deal non lethal damage. Again, this is only for CWL rule set. This is not for pubs or anything like that. But this is huge for competitive gaming, and it's it's huge that they're actually trying to. I keep saying huge. I'm sounding like Donald Trump, but it, it's it's big. It really is because it's going to make these pros, you know, try out these settings, and they're going to see if they like it instead of just removing everything from the game and playing with like three specialists out of like the 10 or 12 in the game. You know, it's going to make for a, a wider variety of gameplay. All right, we're done with CWL. We're on to challenges. Challenges, the hard stop challenge. They recovered the majority of lost hard stop challenges progress that was reset for many players. I don't really know what that challenge is, so if you guys have that problem, hopefully it's fixed. On to camo progression, weapon reactive camos. Resolved an issue that would lead to the reactive camo immediately jumping from its wrap state to stage two. Uh, resolved an issue that would prevent gold camo from advancing a stage when the player was underwater. Dropped weapons with wrapped reactive camos will remain wrapped when picked up by another player. And then Helion Salvo Launcher, Penthouse Camo now pro properly progresses by destroying Sniper's Nest, Attack Chopper, Gunship, Sentry Gun, or Mantis. I'm glad they made that easier. It was a it was a real pain in the ass to actually get that done when it was just Sentries and Mantis. But they made it easier, so hopefully you guys get those uh, gold and dark matter camos on your launchers. Miscellaneous, resolved a number of issues with camos applying to weapons incorrectly. Adjusted Recon and Custom Reflex reticles to ensure that they are, pre are precisely centered. I notice this when I'm playing games because I use recon or reflex sight almost everything. And um, when I aim in and I shoot, I notice it's adjusted to the left a little bit. The hit marker is like to the right, the dots to the left. So hopefully that's fixed. They resolved an issue where being blinded or concussed would stop the player from capturing a zone in hardpoint domination or control. I never experienced that, so I didn't know that was a thing. They resolved an issue where melee attacks could connect with enemies that were visible when the melee began but we're behind cover before the attack connected. I've experienced that because I had to use the freaking knife to get gold on it. That sucks. I mean, it sucks for the person running away from the knife. Wasn't so bad for me. Resolved an exploit where the sprint cancels reload option could lead to a fire rate that was faster than intended. Wow. All right, guys, that's all I'm going to go over. This is a multiplayer channel. I played some Blackout. That's so I'm going to go over the main multiplayer things and competitive stuff. As far as the other stuff for zombies, there's a whole lot of it. It'd be a whole another 20, 30 minute video if I were to explain all of it. And then Blackout, there's some things in Blackout that you guys want to see. I would just click the link below, check that out on your own. I mean, there's a lot, like I said, zombies has its own separate video that I would have to do. And I'm not into zombies yet because I'm not going for the camos yet. So I don't really want to talk about it there or I'm not that into zombies anyway. So I'm not going to go over something like that and hold you guys up any longer. Blackout couple things there you guys go check that out with the link below charlieintel.com but other than that thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did leave a thumbs up on the video i'm going to be putting content out like this all the time i'm about to go grind some 
XP on freaking Nuketown, guys. Like, this thing is, is finally in the game. So, let's go play Nuketown. I'm going to be streaming it. If you guys want to join up, literally just add me. Um, say in the chat that what your gamer tag is. And I'll, I'll invite you guys. We can play six stacks. But, hopefully you guys enjoy the video again. Sub to the channel if you're new. Thumbs up if you're new. Or if you like it. Until next time, it's been Tizzle. And I'm out. Peace.